welcome back my Smith Outposters. Today we're going to be reviewing a little bit of a different device that's on the Android gaming platform and that's the Razer's Edge gaming tablet with the Kashi V2 Pro controller. This device does retail for $399.99 so let's see how it stacks up to some of the other devices that we've already reviewed and see if it's really worth that cost. So let's talk a little bit about the hardware. This device does have the Qualcomm Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 chipset, 6 gigabits of RAM, 128 gigabits of storage, and it does support up to 2 terabits if you add a micro SD card. So when we look at that 128 gigabit storage, guys, you got to remember that also includes the operating system. I've only installed a few features so far on my Razer Edge, and I'm already about half of what I can have for storage on my Razer Edge. So keep that in mind. If you are looking at this device, you're going to want to get a micro SD card because the storage is going to fill up rather quickly. It does have a 6.8 display at 144 hertz, and the display is touchscreen if you go with the tablet option um, when you purchase your device. It also supports up to Wi-Fi 6E, so again, if you have Euros or something like that in your home that support up to 6E, it will support that for your Wi-Fi. It also has Bluetooth 5.2, built-in speakers, and two microphones, so we're going to be checking that out. And it also has a 5-megapixel five five camera built-in to the display. Not super great quality, but we're gonna test that out too. How is the screen recording? We're gonna test all of that here today, and I'm gonna show you all of it. The USB-C is for the charging, but the time on this one, guys, is only about five to six hours of full gameplay. So let's check out the actual device, see how it stacks up to some of the other devices that we've already demonstrated, like the ROG Alley or the PlayStation Portal, and see if this thing is really worth it. All right, guys, so I just got done showing you the Razer Edge with the Kashi V2 controller. Super easy to remove the tablet. Just pull it out, and then you have your controller and then your tablet separately, right? This, honestly, if I was to go and decide if I'm going to buy a Steam Deck or this um, Razer's Edge, honestly, I would have went with Steam Deck. I think that for me, I like cloud gaming, but I get tired of all of the subscriptions, right? I think that's an important part of what you're committing to when you're getting something like a Razer Edge is that you are going to be cloud gaming. You're going to have to require subscriptions. If you want to play Steam, you need to make sure that your PC is on so that you can use that Steam link. Same thing with your PlayStation. The PlayStation uh, Remote Play is available in the um, Android or, or the Google Play Store. Um, just keep in mind there is a cost associated with that. So if you're looking to hook up to your PlayStation for $399.99, I would go with the PlayStation Portal. Don't buy this specifically to hook up to your PlayStation. But if you are going to be doing a lot of cloud gaming and things like that, I think this could be the device for you. If you do want to just purchase the controller without the um, tablet that we purchased for $399, you can grab one of those over on Amazon for about 70 bucks. So if you already have a nice Android phone, that might be a better route than spending that $400 to include the Android tablet. But if you don't like messing around with your phone, like I don't like messing around with my phone, then maybe this is the device for you. So just do a good comparison, guys. Are you willing to um, only do cloud gaming, then go with the Razer's Edge. But if you're looking for something that's more expanded and be able to play a little bit bigger games, then maybe you should switch over to like a Steam Deck. I think that for me, when I'm playing this, the controls feel wrong, guys. I feel like this joystick is way too close to these buttons, which caused me to miss things like jumping or being able to run quickly because I kept switching off of the joystick over to the command button. It felt like the joysticks were super stiff, which I don't really like when I am playing a 
console game or a handheld, I want it to be more similar to a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller. And I did not feel like I was getting that out of the Kashi V2 controller. So also think about that too. I felt like the controls were relatively stiff. I did test out the onboard screen recorder, which you can see here now in the video. I thought the quality was actually pretty terrible. So if you're looking to be able to use this for like a YouTube video or show gameplay or anything like that, and you're planning to use the built-in screen recorder, the quality is not amazing, you guys. So make sure that you keep that in mind. I do think that the built-in microphones were relatively good on the um, Android tablet, but for me, I didn't really care for like the screen record feature just because the quality of that screen record feature was so low. So I hope you liked my review here, guys. Please make sure you like and subscribe. We're going to be doing reviews like this all the time on different gaming devices. So like and subscribe and join us back here on Smith Outpost for our next review.